after uh, an assessment. Yeah. So when you are learning something, when you learn something, um, you must produce something. You must, uh, for example, when, when you learn a language, in order that people know that you can speak the language or you acquire the language or not, you are tested. Or it might be that you were asked to uh, communicate with, with other person. And after the communication with other person or after you do the uh, examination, for example, there should be a wash-back effect. There should be uh, something that you learn from the test or from the communication with other people. Then you learn whether um, the language that, that you produce or the way how you do the test is correct or not. So that is the wash back effect. So this term is uh, specific to this all, specific to teaching uh, a language. And from the, from the effect, then you will know whether it should be make better or is it uh, ac acceptable or you have to, to do it. You, do, you have to do another effort to make it uh, other people understand you. Is it understood? Jadi, yes, ma'am. Kuncinya itu was back effect itu adalah setelah uh, what is it? Setelah kita belajar sesuatu, ya belajar terutama ini kaitannya dengan bahasa. Setelah kita belajar bahasa, bahasa apapun itu kita pertama mengalami apa yang disebut sebagai silent period. Silent period means that you do not produce anything. You listen. You have lots of uh, input from your audience, sorry, from your interlocutor or maybe from your parents, from your caretakers, from your nannies, from your brother, sister, grandmother, or whoever. Um, the first stage when somebody is learning a language is actually through listening or maybe through reading. You just process whatever you have. And after that, you produce something. Whether you produce sound, or whether you produce a word or a sentence. Yeah. When it comes to, to, to speaking, it is like that. Or when you go to school, you are tested. You are assessed by your teacher. The teacher can give you, what is it, question? or maybe you have to do an assignment or maybe a test. And after that, the test is given feedback or what you say to your uh, partner, to your parents, to your uh, sister, brother, or to whoever who talks to you, you are given a kind of uh, feedback, a kind of, what is it, response. And from the response, then you notice whether um, what you produce, whether your sentence, or it might be whether the uh, what you say, or whether what you write in your uh, test during your test or in your uh, conversation, whether it is correct or not, whether it is acceptable or not, and after that, from that, then you will make a kind of uh, self-reflection to have a look at what other people's comments or what other people understand about your sentence or 
about your what, what whether your writing is acceptable or not, or whether what you have uh, done in the test is correct or not. And then from there, majorly, or it should be that you learn something, you get something. And this will influence the next output, the next, uh, what is it, sentence that you produce, or maybe the result of your uh, assignment will influence how you should, what is it, what, what you should do after the test. That is the Wasback effect. Jadi sebenarnya kalau normal orang itu kalau diberi masukan itu akan memberikan wasback effect. Oh kalau gitu ini benar, kalau gitu ini salah, kalau gitu ini oh enggak, enggak, enggak apa ya, enggak bisa diterima mungkin ya atau tidak tepat. Jadi kalau gitu apa ya? Nah ini menjadikan seseorang kemudian belajar lagi itu yang disebut sebagai wasback effect. Jadi seperti uh, unas kalau misalnya dulu ada unas dari unas itu kan sebenarnya kita bisa belajar. Oh kalau gitu bagaimana ya ini saya harus mempersiapkan unas berikutnya ketika tahu tryoutnya seperti apa. Ya, jadi ada wasback effect ada dampak yang ke belakang itu seperti apa dari apa yang terjadi di belakang itu kemudian berikutnya yang ke depan seperti apa tuh is it understood yes it is ma'am thank you oke okay. okay. oke the next slide next Yes, there is a question, sorry. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, a question. Yes. Uh, could you uh, in the research methods? Who is talking, please? Yes. Sorry, who is talking? Yes. Hello, Lily you are here. Sorry? Lily. Huh? Lily. Lily, okay. In the research methods, the researchers explain that they use uh, he use uh, two uh, level ability in the uh, participants one is uh, high ability and low ability why the researchers the researchers use uh, two level of ability not one ability if Yes. Uh, I just Lu. Saya dah agak pun. Lu. Apa ini kok tiba-tiba muni? Yes. Uh, okay. If I use two, it mean uh, why the research use two level of ability from the participant, not just one ability, not just one level. Okay, we we do not talk about it right now. Yeah, L later because there is going to be a a section on the method. Okay, so we are going to discuss it later. Yes, Imratul, you can continue now. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, the next sentence, um, the, the researcher stated that Teachers aiming to implement a variety of assessment strategies at key points during the class or lesson seek to collect information that will subsequently inform their decision making. So uh, in this sentence, we actually know that classroom based assessments uh, uh, include several language um, assessments, not only one, it's several language assessments in the class. And the assessments are um, for the teachers to make decision. And the decision related to specific learning needs, appropriate classroom uh, interaction, placement tests, for example, like the level of the students, and so on and so forth. So decision making here is the decision that um, the teachers will make uh, in the class after giving the assessment to the, to the students. 
Okay, so um, 